Okay, hello, this is Dr. James, and today we're going to do a fusion experiment. Here I have a nugget of beryllium and a uh, piece of americium bombarding it. I have it taped together. I don't know if you can see in there. Let's see, where is that? Okay. Put a little piece of americium in there. And we're going to use our gamma ray spectrometer to. Uh, Measure. Let's see if we can get these both in frame. Oh, come on. Oh, it's stuck to my finger. Come on. There we go. Let's see if we can measure any fusion gamma rays. Now, the neat thing about americium is that I've been doing a comparison of all the different spectra that I have of different radiation sources, and americium has a very low. Uh, gamma ray uh, peak very low in energy and then there's nothing above it it's very clean above that so if there's another peak caused by the fusion of uh, see when you take alpha particles high energy alpha particles and you bombard beryllium with it it will create a fusion reaction that releases neutrons basically beryllium only has one isotope one stable isotope beryllium 9 and uh, it will basically uh, fuse that or destroy the atom and produce neutrons and uh, let's take a look we'll see we'll see if we can get some cool results from this we'll do some fusion experiments with uh, beryllium and uh, americium let's get going okay again let's take a close-up so there oh, let's turn on the light here there's our strip of americium and nice gray beryllium and uh we'll just put this by the detector here look at that it's super hot okay and uh we will see if we get any gamma rays due to um the fusion reaction caused between americium and beryllium because we already know what the uh, gamma ray spectrum looks like from um just americium Okay, that should be pretty cool. Okay, so here's the spectrum of the uh, americium beryllium uh, fusion reaction. And uh, I'm going to have to probably download the data and compare it to, um, to the original americium spectrum without the beryllium and see what the difference is. But it should be interesting. See if there's uh, different peaks there, different different spectral shapes. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's take a look at the data. So what I've done here is I, I'm just plotting these on the linear scale because um, those signals are a little bit noisy. Sometimes they go negative. And uh, as you know, log plots don't like negative numbers too much. And uh, I'll keep it simple, right? So. I've overlaid basically the americium beryllium spectrum, which is the blue one here, with the americium spectrum. And I, you know, there's some noise. There's always noise when you're uh, photon counting and doing nuclear counting. And so I tried to match these up as much as possible and subtract them. And the interesting thing is, is in this region here, now this has just been number. Uh, I didn't convert this to energy, but. Uh, the uh, signals are very low on the americium, basically the uh, control source and the, the fusion source with the americium beryllium is much higher. So I'm interested in that. So what I did is I took these uh, two plots and I subtracted them. And actually in this plot I did convert it into KEV. So this is KEV. And um, this is where the signals were big, and you basically were subtracting one big number from another big number, so you're going to get pretty big noise. The noise is going to be a percentage of that. So I'm not attributing anything to this stuff here. But in this region, the americium signal was very low, so the, basically the, the background noise, if you want to call that the noise, the, our reference signal, was very low, so the noise in it's going to be very low. And we're seeing something that looks like a, a real real uh, peak here. I'm just cutting out the 
the uh, part where the americium signals are high. We'll just look at the peak. So it looks like around 120 to 140 keV and a tail up to 160 keV that there is some something going on here. Some kind of um, x-rays that or gamma rays that we're seeing that we don't see in the americium source alone. So I would attribute this to uh, possibly a, 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 a signature or signal uh, created by the fusion of uh, alpha particles with the uh, beryllium. Very interesting. Okay, let me uh, try to maybe look at the uh, gamma ray charts and see see what there is to see on that. See if there's some kind of um, transitions that are 120 to 140 keV or so. Very cool, huh? Okay, again here is our chart of nucleides and now we're looking at the low end. This is down near hydrogen and of course neutron is uh, considered a nucleon too. Is there really four neutrons bound together? Stable? I've never seen such a thing. Anyway, neutrons. Anyway, let's, let's not get sidetracked. Here is beryllium. There's exactly one stable isotope of beryllium and it is stable and it has a uh, binding energy it's for the neutron it's 1.6 megavolts okay and Q yeah, it's in the megavolt range also so let's let's just take a look at um, uh, let's see do we have any gamma ray transitions for beryllium KEV 9-4, beryllium 9-4, oh, this is 1.6 megavolts. These are very high energies for these gamma transitions. Three megavolts. I'm not really seeing anything in our range there. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we could look at americium. Okay, so here's some of the uh, quantum transitions of the nucleus, atomic transitions. And of course, you know, if you study quantum mechanics, the energy that of the photon that's released is the energy between the two different levels. So if it starts at one level and it goes to another level, um, that's the energy of the photon that comes off. And I guess they don't have these transitions labeled. Maybe they're in the chart. Oh yeah, see over here, here are some of them, but they are very high energies much higher than what we're seeing, I do believe. Anyway. Something to look at. Maybe I'll look at americium next. Okay, so here is americium, and it's toward the upper end of our chart of isotopes. Americium-241, I believe that's the isotope that we're looking at. It's created in a nuclear reactor. It's not a uh, natural element. Now we can look at the gamma rays. Oh, see, here's a here's a gamma ray at about. Oh wait, wait, this is the delta. 116, 164. So this this might be what we're looking at there, and maybe that's why some of the uh, lower stuff is skewed also. Maybe neutrons are coming off of the beryllium and causing some kind of excitation. So 164K, if I'm not mistaken, that's pretty close to, um, here's a transition that's 139, 194, 197. So these are all in the ballpark. So maybe the fusion reaction has neutrons, since I have the uh, beryllium very close to the uh, americium. 120, 140, 160. 
Okay. 139. I remember those are maybe a little bit shifted. 116. So these these transitions maybe are in the ballpark. So since the americium source is so close to the beryllium, the alpha particle comes off the americium, hits the beryllium, and then uh, maybe the neutrons come off the beryllium from the fusion, or the beryllium fissions and produces, uh, I believe it breaks up in the helium particles. <laughs> Maybe some of that stuff's coming back and hitting the americium and exciting these transitions. So that could be... Okay. Okay, so here is the kind of reaction that we're looking at. Okay, so we have an alpha particle hitting beryllium-9, producing carbon-13. And then it can have one of these reactions, neutron plus carbon-12 plus gamma. And again, this is a high-energy gamma ray. It's 5 MeV. Here's another possible reaction. 1.2 MeV photon. Here's a two-photon reaction. So both these energies are pretty high. Okay. This is an alpha neutron reaction. You put an alpha particle in, you get a neutron out, and it transmutates the beryllium to carbon. Okay. And here is the kind of reaction that we're looking for helium plus beryllium makes a carbon and a free neutron. And I guess this was associated with the discovery of the neutron initially by James Chadwick. Very interesting. Very interesting reaction. Of course, the helium has to have a pretty high energy for this fusion reaction to happen. Okay, so just wanted to take a look back at some of the higher uh, spectrum and see if there's any photons up there. I, I believe that the chart that I was looking at a, a second ago showed a, a gamma ray that was um, about 3.2 uh, MeV. And... Uh, well, anyway, uh, but I thought I saw something that one of the Q of the reactions was lower, like the 1.2 megavolts, but the Q is, is not the photon. That's just the uh, energy of the reaction. Um, so our gamma ray spectrometer only goes up to 2.9 megavolts, almost 3, so we wouldn't be able to see the 3.2 megavolt photon if it did exist, if we were getting it. So anyway, I just wanted to look up a little bit higher and see if I'm seeing anything else, but it looks very noisy up here, which is what I thought before when I subtracted these two. So uh, I guess I'm not really seeing anything above noise in this region. Anyway, very interesting. Uh, alpha, alpha fusion experiment with uh, beryllium and americium. This is Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching.